Hello, welcome to week seven. Week seven is from 21st to 25th of March, 2022. And the focus for this week is models for blended learning. The two of us shall be handling this week. Dr. John Oparaduru and myself, Professor Inegbe John Juliet Obajaji, shall be in charge of this week. And the first week is handled by Dr. John Oparaduru. Let's look at the activities for the week. Looking at the activities for this week, we have the first day, we're going to look at the synchronous activities for blended learning and examples, and asynchronous activities for blended learning and examples. The second day will be balancing the practical implications of synchronous and asynchronous activities. Then the third day is preparing design for learning through synchronous and asynchronous activities. The fourth day will be given for forum discussions and assignments. And on the fifth day, we're going to meet, have a live class using the Zoom link that you're going to receive. And on that same day, you are expected to take your evaluation quiz. Now, I'm going to start with day two because my colleague has already taken you on the day one. And today, we're going to be looking at balancing the practical implications of synchronous and asynchronous activities. The learning outcome are by the end of this topic, you will be able to select synchronous and asynchronous learning activities to meet learning outcomes. You'll be able to facilitate blended learning in synchronous and asynchronous learning mode. Now, let's start with selecting synchronous and asynchronous activities. How much of synchronous and asynchronous activities should be included in a course? That is a question that comes to mind. Now, to solve this, first consider the synchronous learning and weigh it against the more convenient and accessible asynchronous learning. Secondly, once you have been able to determine the desired amount of asynchronous learning, consider the delivery mode, in-person or online. To determine this, let the learning outcome guide. Also, consider the availability of the learners and tutors where tutor guide is required. Consider available synchronous and asynchronous tools for seamless delivery. Consider the learner's level of usage of the available tools and technical support that may be required. Now compare the cost implication of synchronous and asynchronous learning activities. With that, you'll be able to take a firm decision. Now, let us look at the advantages and disadvantages of synchronous and asynchronous learning. Let's start with the synchronous learning. What are the advantages? The advantages are effective collaboration and teamwork, promote in-person, virtual, or face-to-face -face integration or interaction, then time and cost saving, assessment of learning is possible through observation. Motivation is gained through social presence and it enhances immediate feedback. Now let's look at the disadvantages. On the disadvantages, it requires availability of participants in the same time, the same place, and may require advanced technical infrastructure. At the same time, the quality of engagement is determined by the facilitator's skill. Now let's look at the asynchronous. On the part of the asynchronous, let's look at the advantages. The advantages of the asynchronous. Asynchronous can be used anytime, anywhere, learning. Learners have time for research and reflection before responding. 
instructors or tutors also have time to reflect and give thoughtful feedback. Their written expressions are more thorough and detailed because there is time to think through. Now on the disadvantage aspect of it, achievement depends on increased level of self-direction or self-pacing. The quality of engagement is determined by the facilitator skill. No immediate access to instructor. Then some learners feel isolated. And that could be discouraging. And that could de be demotivating when learning. Now, what are the implications of synchronous and asynchronous activities in blended learning facilitation? Let's look at the synchronous aspect first. The implication for facilitation. Identify activities for real-time collaboration and teamwork. Determine the time requirements for collaboration and teamwork activities. Identify the activity that will be done virtually and physically. Structure feedback mechanism technique. Ensure everyone has access to the required technology where it is virtual. Then set and monitor quality engagement. Now let's look at the asynchronous. For the asynchronous, if you're going to use it as a facilitator, then note the instruction must be clear and concise. Activities should promote deep learning. Give feedbacks and without delay. The feedback should enhance learning. And again, feedback comments should be active and not passive. Give and guide and monitor progress. It is highly required because they are not seeing you. So when there is no proper guidance to monitor progress, then it could demotivate the learners. Give attention to both individual and group learners. These are the applications that you may have when you want to facilitate working with the synchronous and asynchronous activities in blended learning mode. Having said this, you have a reference book. Work on it. Go through it for more. In summary, we have looked at how to select synchronous and asynchronous learning activities. We we'll look at the advantages of synchronous and asynchronous learning and the application of synchronous and asynchronous learning activity has a blended learning facilitation. Now, having said this, I have an assignment for you. And in this assignment, choose a topic in your course. Set a learning outcome for the topic. Present synchronous and two synchronous and two asynchronous activities using the learning outcome as a guide. Then we're going to review this in the live class. I hope you enjoyed this section. Thank you for listening.